Okay, thank you for inviting me to the um, My Research Why It Matters series. I've um, you know, been looking for a chance to share like this, and um, this is a very timely topic because, of course, everyone's um, obsessed with what's happening with COVID-19, and actuaries are no exception. So um, this is a good way to give you an overview of some of the things that actuaries do and get into some very specific things that actuaries are thinking about with COVID-19. So I start with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries website. This is our national accrediting body, body and they set professional standards for actuaries. They work through seven practice boards and looking at a list of those is useful. These are the major areas that actuaries work in. Of course, in general, actuaries are concerned with risks, risks that drive insurance and interconnections between risk that affect other finances. Um, so actuaries are synthesizing everything that they understand about a risk and they're looking at futurism. They, they need to be able to look 30 years into the future and think about what's going to happen with an insurance plan and everything that goes into it. So actuaries are very concerned with finance and investment, uh, general insurance, which is automobile and home and, and those kind of uh, physical kinds of insurance, health and care, which of course is central to what's happening with COVID-19. There's a life board for life insurance or life assurance uh, risks and calculations, pensions board. Now, it's interesting, you might not think of this as being a main area for actuaries, but there's a resource and environment board, which is looking at climate change and sustainability issues because if you're going to plan your business 30 years into the future then climate change and sustainability and environmental factors are going to drive a lot of what's going to happen in in all areas there is a risk management board that that deals with risks so this is the general overlay of what actuaries have been doing all along, uh, even before the event of COVID-19 came along this year. When that happened, the IFOA moved quickly to organize structures and, and get actuaries thinking about that. So they've established a pandemics hub on the IFOA website to gather information together and to um, focus all the efforts of actuaries <clears throat> on the pandemics hub and this is this is being led by uh, Dr. Louise Pryor who is the incoming president-elect of the IFOA. Uh, she's the executive sponsor for what they now call the ICAT or IFOA COVID-19 Action Task Force. So the IFOA Pandemic Hub is a good place to find information specific to actuaries, other resources. There is a volunteer opportunity here, links to um, regulatory concerns, and more information is being added all the time for that. So the IFOA put out a call for volunteers in April and over 500 actuaries and um, colleagues responded to that, volunteering up to quarter time to work on the implications of COVID-19. Uh, I volunteered uh, when I was able to and, um, and expressed to them that, that I really wanted to get into understanding the big picture of actuarial practice in the UK, since I haven't uh, practiced in the UK, but I've practiced elsewhere previously. 
So I was put on a work group that started off to uh, summarize the results of a survey that the IFOA did. So let me bring up this survey. And um, let's see, okay. Um, I need to get from one screen to the other. And um, I'll show this as a slideshow. Let me just flip the displays here. So, um, okay. Do you have the slideshow up on the screen share now? Terrific. <clears throat> so IFOA sent a series of questions to the volunteers for the ICAT and uh, over 400 actuaries responded. This represented over 50 countries that are part of IFOA and actuaries gave over 700 comments. So our working group went through all the comments, all the responses to do a nice summary of all the information. This is written to actuaries um, from actuaries to actuaries to get into some real specifics about how we practice and some of the information we can glean from each other's viewpoints. So let me skip to the detail here and show you some of the specific things that actuaries are thinking right now about implications of COVID-19. So the survey started off with um, gathering actuaries' thoughts about the sources of information that they use. And they looked at the relevance, the reliability, and the readability of the various sources that they have. Um, this is an interesting graph because, <clears throat> um, I mean, the most, you know, all of us, are flooded with information about COVID-19. And some of it's good, some of it's bad, um, some of it's distorted. So you really have to think about where are you getting wholesome information from? And you know, if you really think about that, it's not surprising that um, news from TV and radio, online, and government communications and briefings are some of the most, the ones that actuaries considered the most relevant, reliable, and readable, um, lower marks for Facebook and word of mouth. You know, on, on Facebook yesterday, someone was posting, criticizing some government official about saying the public shouldn't wear masks. And when you looked at it, it was something that he had said March 8th. So three months ago, a government official was saying don't wear masks because they wanted masks to go to medical personnel. Um, well, yes, they've changed the story on masks now because conditions have changed. And you don't always get that for, with, with some of the sources. They, they get out of context. Now, I found it very interesting here that um, <clears throat> actuaries give a lot of relevance, reliability, and readability to internal publications and external industry publications, but they aren't using them much because they don't exist yet. So there's a gap here that there's a need for those publications, industry publications that don't exist yet. Um, there were a lot of specific sources that actuaries mentioned, which um, are probably familiar if you've been looking around about COVID-19 information. Okay, so specifically what the IFOA membership wants IFOA to do and the volunteer group, the ICAT group, uh, the ICAT group is being organized now into 90 work streams, dividing 500 volunteers up into 90 work streams to go off and study 
very, very specific aspects of COVID-19 and coordinate all that into coherent advice guides. So actuaries want advice guides. They want advice on standard actuarial concerns like profitability and um, sources of profitability and in insurance, economics, assumptions, what government really requirements will there be. Consumer behavior is going to be changed and changed forever. So actuaries and insurance companies need to adjust to that. But there were some wild ideas too that really come to matter. You know, all of a sudden, we all go working from home, we realize, well, okay, this, this works somewhat, and in some ways it doesn't too, but what are the short and long-term implications of that for real estate planning? If companies start to realize that uh, we don't have to have all this office space, you know, how do you project that? How do you use uh, medical information, mortality and morbidity, to analyze something like real estate planning? That's something actuaries will contribute to. And work streams are being organized to look at that kind of concern. <clears throat> actuaries also gave a lot of feedback about the kind of support that members need. The, the FOA is conducting professional exams. They continue doing professional exams. There's been disruption to that. There's been disruption also to the working lives of actuaries just like many other uh, professions. So the national organization got a lot of feedback on uh, things that IFOA can be doing to support members. Um, now back to the uh, back to the technical work. Actuaries were asked if they are allowing for COVID nineteen in the specific work that they do. Seventy three percent of them said they are making changes or expect to make changes, and generally the ones who were not yet making changes, uh, the reasons that they gave are that they just don't know enough yet to do that. Maybe there are a few people who are in an area that is sort of immune to what's going on, but almost, almost nothing is immune to how things are going to be changed by COVID-19. <clears throat> um, yeah, there was a lot of discussion about how COVID-19 has made it harder to do get work done. There have been pros and cons, the pros of, of working electronically, and um, but also the cons of losing face-to-face -face contact. If you work with clients and people at other companies or just keeping the team together, then there are issues with face-to-face -face contact. Um, some people were very positive about the experience of uh, less traveling, less driving time to get to work and so forth, but a lot of adverse impact too. Um, disruption to plans and um, especially in the short term, things that just stopped. Now, I wanted to spend a little more time with this, partly because um, one of our working group did such a smashing job on this slide. Um, I mean, a wizard in PowerPoint. She was um, the one who put this together, Holly Stewart, on our working group, was focusing on change in demand for actuarial skills. And what we got out of this when she had packaged it so neatly like this is that um, certainly there are winners and losers, um, ups and downs, lots of decrease in the short term because of the sudden lockdown, the recession, um, 
the risks occurring with rising costs, hiring freezes and budget problems and project cancellations, all of these arrows lead to business stresses. There's tremendous stress on the business of insurance and any business that involves risk right now with all of these short-term disruptions flowing to uh, business stress. Um, you know, someone responded to the survey that um, I'm on maternity leave, I'm supposed to come back in June, but I was told I'm being made redundant in May. So, you know, real people's lives are vastly disrupted. In the longer term, <clears throat> actuaries couldn't stop naming areas where there's going to be a need for more analysis and more, um, well, more of the actuarial analysis that we already do to analyze risk and to make sense of calculations, lots and lots of specifics for that. Um, you know, they got into more and more specific as they got into their particular areas. And um, then they also <clears throat> got to some new work areas that result from the COVID-19 pandemic. There will be new forms of insurance being developed after COVID-19. Uh, new probably new regulations, new calculations to be responded to, to go to government boards, um, new kinds of modeling for COVID-19, and um, you know, issues of resource and environment will continue to be key. Uh, working with governments to see how Actuaries can contribute to governmental understanding and planning of what's going on. I'd say <clears throat> what I conclude from all of that is that for our students, students who are in the first year of an actuarial science program or students who might be starting an actuarial science program, this is an incredible time to be um, heading for a career in actuarial science because there's going to be an explosion of follow-up that will be necessary. Uh, many, many professional technical areas will be looking at COVID-19 and making sense of it from a lot of different directions. Actuaries will be trying to pull in and synthesize all that information to make coherent sense of it for their companies. And um, I think it's a very exciting time for someone to be heading into the profession. So um, I hope that's been a useful look at um, what actuaries do in general and what they're doing specifically now. Um, I'll, I'll stop the screen sharing so we can go back to video and uh, go to any Q&A.